Is Evans a racist? Jira's deception? And Tia goes dark? More next. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Yo. <laughs> hello, everybody. Hello, hello. It is the Red Line After Show, where we are covering episodes three and four. Four we meet by one or the other, and we need glory for a while. I am your host, Joshua Wright, and I am so glad to be here today. We have so much to get into. Before we get into anything, I'd like to introduce my beautiful co-host here, Ms. Kelsey Hightower. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm Kelsey. Um, I'm so happy mm-hmm. to be sitting here and talking to you mm-hmm. today. Um, Josh, I am excited. Yes. Oh, my gosh. What did you think of this first these next two episodes. Well, before we get into that, I just I want to let everyone know that we have so much planned for you all today. We have our special segment, The Thin Red Line, where I wrote a question and I want you all to ponder on this while we're covering the show. Does protecting one life replace killing another? That will be later on in our show. We also have our news and gossip and we will be having our predictions. Now to Kelsey's question, what did I think about these shows? Well, Kelsey, I'm going to tell you, they left us in tears again. I- <laughs> I know. Were you crying? Were there tears for you? No, I swallowed it. Okay. I swallowed it. <laughs> Definitely swallowed it. Uh, they when when I saw the connection between Jira and Tia, it really did something for me. I not personally, but through a third party, I have experience with someone who did meet a family member, and it just you know it really spoke to me. So I think that they really knew how to write this show to get us going again. Well, how about you? What did you think? I mean, I had tears again. This is going to be a running theme, I think, for both of us. <laughs> and um, during one point, I mean, we were both holding hands, yes, we watching were. the show. Yes. I mean, I wish we could just watch it with everybody. I'm telling you. But we were, we were, you know, like. Yes. Embracing it was it it's was intense. it's an it's an emotional show. Yes, it is. They um they really know what they're doing and this week it just got it just got more into the history, uh, understanding Paul's character more, why he became a police officer and understanding Calder's I want to say his confusion. So to before we get into that, I, I really do want to stick to Officer Evans. Um the question is asked, is he a racist? And based off what we're seeing, what do you think? You know, he it's it's hard to see. I, I don't know. Um, I don't necessarily have an answer, I think, for that. I okay. know that his family seems more racist. Mm-hmm. And I think that when you grow up um, around that environment, then mm-hmm. that is going to influence who you are as a person. And yes. so that is going to rub off. And I think that we have seen where he's coming from in this case mm-hmm. more so than if he, I mean, racism is coming up because of what actually happened that night. But I feel like his family has been more vocal Mm -hmm. about racist issues than I think he has. And we saw that when his dad, well, I, we've been, it's been touching throughout this whole series. Of course. Mm -hmm. Um, And during the deposition, I think, I'm not sure if that really talked about racism or more of him trying to get off of the hook mm-hmm. of um, what happened that night. So to answer your question, um, I don't know. There's a lot. It's hard mm-hmm. to. I think his family is has is a bit a racist. Okay. Yes, and it has influence on him. Okay, um, and that's how he's grown up. What would you say your perception is? Uh, I don't think he's a racist. I think that he is. I think he was in the the wrong place. No, I feel like he was in the right place at the wrong time, because. When you watch the episode, he did not come from, when we saw the tape, later on we see the tape, he didn't come from the front angle or the side angle. He came from the rear angle. So in all honesty, when I think about it as an individual, when I walk into a place and someone's leaning over the counter, you don't see them, especially if they're wearing things that are covering their skin. So I don't think he's a racist, but I think that he is conflicted with expressing that to his father because he doesn't want to disappoint his dad. To me, his brother is the one who is clearly the racist one. And I think Evans is just just really misunderstood. And he's he's such a kid. He just, I mean, he, he killed someone. Uh, and he has a lot of ego t- that he's battling with, too. Yes. I think we see that a lot when the news 
is pushing titles like mm-hmm. he's a hero and he feeds into it. He's just right. not emotionally stable. That's true. And he also doesn't know who he is as a person. Mm-hmm. And I think that everything that's happening to him mm-hmm. is a reaction instead of him knowing who he is that's true. and being able to express that. Well, doesn't that lead into him becoming a police officer to please his father instead of knowing? I mean, I'm from a family where I come from, I'm a creative. My mother was a creative, but everyone else in my family, they're engineers, uh, pastor, uh, football coaches, chemists. I think I mentioned that earlier, but for me, I'm a person who was abstract. And to a point, you don't want to disappoint your parents, but I had to let them know, hey, I want to go into the creative fields. I don't want to do, I don't want to become an educator. Not saying they're not creative, but I've I've worked in fashion. So I feel like Evans is going through that conflict because he did become a police officer to please his father. And to be honest, he doesn't know who he is. And you can see that clearly. You hit that on the head. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to segue into his brother just a little bit before we move on. What are your feelings on his brother and his reaction with Carranza, Officer Carranza? Um, He's had very bold reactions to mm-hmm. everybody. I mean, Vic even. Yeah. Um, I Are they in a relationship or have they had a relationship? It seems like there's some history there. It's fuzzy for me. So yeah. I feel like he's very no filter, um, kind of, you know, racist mm-hmm. sort of person. So right. he says whatever he thinks and whatever he thinks is funny. Mm-hmm. We've seen that with um, when he talked about Paul um, with the shooting. Right. Uh, right. In the first, the, first, or the first episode, I believe. Yeah, with the it was joke. the first or second with yeah. the joke. Mm-hmm. So that was inappropriate and right. uncalled for. And that um, showed insensitivity to Paul and what yep. happened in the situation. Mm-hmm. So I think that he is saying things with no filter. Mm-hmm. And I think that that also shows like racism a little bit yes. whenever he is talking to. Um, him, yes. Oh yeah, Kelsey. Um, forgive us. It was actually the friend that made the racist comment. Oh, is that? And, and his brother defended him. Remember, oh, he elbowed him or he headbutted him on the true. table. Yeah, that's but true. but the point is still the same. You're still accurate in your point. I mean, birds of a feather flock together. They, uh, okay, so, so I heard that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there you're you, right. Yeah. <laughs> So but he's hanging out with the wrong crowd. He is. And it, it's starting to influence him in a way where even if he's not a racist, his brother, Paul, is beginning to feel the results of his deception. I would like to move into Jira. So we see Jira. And at the end of last week, she receives a long email from Tia Young soon to or running for the campaign of Alderman, which we know was a city council uh, official in the state of uh, Illinois, in the city of Chicago. And when she gets the email, she, you know, in the course of waiting, she makes an appointment to meet with her. She does not tell her other father that she's going to meet, although her father did give her the permission to reach out to the adoption agency. So now we're coming full circle. Tia and Jira have met. And Tia goes to the school because of the mishap that took place at the end of their meeting and approaches Calder and Calder's, doesn't know anything about it. My question to you is, is Jira's deception, even though it's a negative word, is it positive that she did not tell Calder or is it negative? A positive and negative ju- in what kind of, what, like what, the, what do you mean? What reference? The result, like her keeping mm. it from Calder, is it, was it, does she see a positive result from that or did she, was there going to be a negative result from that? You mean Jira's perspective? Right, Jira's perspective. Um, I would say she's doing it to because she thinks it's going to be a positive result. Okay. Uh, she's a kid. Again, I think it's hard to remember she's 17 because she's so mature and she's going through things That's that true. an adult should be going through and has to face. So she is trying to figure out life and take things into her own hands and make yes. her own decisions. And as a kid, you know, you aren't going to make the right decisions and you're going to mess up. So I think she thinks she's making a positive thing and she just wants to do this on her own. I think that's where it's coming from is she, her dad is kind of like a helicopter dad, according to her. She wants freedom. Mm -hmm. And this is her way to be like, I'm taking matters into my own hands. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this and this is going to be great. I'm going to have a mom and I'll tell my dad like whenever it comes. But as we see, it blows up. Yes. It blew all the way up. With every, (laughs) Everybody. Yes. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know, I guess, 
I don't know. What do you think about her dad's reaction to this? Uh, I think he had an inappropriate reaction. And what I mean by that is I feel in a, okay. So in times like these, this is a, this is a mitigating circumstance. Her father was murdered in cold blood. There was, there was no warning there. He was just completely murdered. So I think what Calder is not understanding is that Jira is in a situation where she needs someone of her ethnicity to lean on whom she can speak to about the the perils of how they're being mistreated by the injustice the, the injustice of the penal system as I, we brought up last week. So I think Calder instead of attack her and scold her, I thought he should have taken that time to really get to know who she was and why she did it. There were times there was a question came up uh, it was in the fourth episode. I'll go ahead and bring it up now. Um, is there such thing as a perfect parent? In my opinion, the answer is yes. I always say that I had perfect parents. If you look at the definition of the word perfect, it means to be complete, not to be without flaw. So that means that a circle is perfect. That means that a square is perfect because it is complete. So my definition... That was beautiful, by the way. I, I just mean, want to interject. <laughs> like, mean, that was incredible. Yeah, it's just, okay. it's true. But Go my, on. so I, just to say this, I say that my parents were perfect parents because they were the complete form of what a parent was. They were loving. They disciplined me. They rewarded me. They, they doted on me. They gave me everything that I wanted. And a lot of things that I, they gave me everything I needed and a lot of things that I wanted and the things that I didn't get that I wanted didn't hurt me. They actually made me better and helped me understand that I had to work for them. So in this situation, I think Calder is a perfect parent until this moment when he scolds Jira, because at that moment she needs love and understanding, not punishment. That's how I look at it. Yeah, we talked about this a lot last week, mm -hmm. too, because I think that he is also hurt. Right. I mean, he's going through so much trauma, mm -hmm. um, trying to hold everything together. Mm -hmm. um, after he loses his husband, we right. saw he's struggling with finances, like accounting, trying to figure yes. all that sort oh of stuff gosh. up. So it logistically, he's going through mm -hmm. a lot of heartache and trauma, I guess I would say. And he is kind of like taking that out because he doesn't have another adult in the picture You're to right. really talk to and work things out. Like, I feel like this is, he really should be seeing like a therapist but or isn't something that like what, that too. Isn't that what Jira was leaning to when she said, I, I need to know who my mother is? You know, to a point, Jira is saying, hey, sh she can help us as well. Yes, but he's hurt and he doesn't want, he thinks that, she like he wants to be everything for Jira mm -hmm. in a way and her finding her birth her biological parents mm -hmm. is a threat to him saying that he's not enough you know yes. and i guess he doesn't have anyone else to find in a way like she's going out on this journey and she's going to find somebody else but then i feel like he's in this position where he doesn't have anyone else to find mm -hmm. and so he's kind of alone and i think he's thinking he's going to be bubbled out you know she's well, gonna find this and i mean it's not true but i feel like that's where true. he's coming from you know well that put that pushes us to our third question Let's though talk about it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well our third question is is calder being realistic about the differences that he and jira have to face jira's facing uh, a racial indifference whereas calder is facing uh gender indifference so, uh, and you know, t are they tantamount? Are they equivalent? Does does racial equal gender? Do we have the same issues? You know, the civil rights movement, the gender equality movement that we're having here. So I feel like there's a conflict there because Jira is saying, I need someone who looks like me. And Calder is saying, but I was in a gay relationship. What do you think about that? Is Calder being realistic about how he's handling Jira's uh, identity crisis? I think that he finally came to the realization of that in this episode because he mentioned that to Jira and mm -hmm. saying, we took so much time focusing on this, on mm -hmm. gender, and we didn't take enough time focusing on racial matters and ethnicity. Whoa. And that, There's your answer. And that, that's exactly <laughs> right. Like, he just didn't do yeah. that. And, and now is the time, you know, if there's 
you can't go back. No, you, you can't. can't change what happened mm. in the past. Yeah. Uh, you have to change it today. Like you have today to do that. Yeah. So he has to look forward and take a stand now. Well, I think Kelsey summed that right on up. <laughs> so, there you go. I mean, episode and we're done. No, just yeah, no. <laughs> episode no. three was just it, it had us up and down. Uh, it was very informative, and I like to see the emotions of Calder and the emotions of Jira and Tia. I like to see how they all came together. Even Evans, Officer Evans, even though he's looked at as the the nemesis or the villain in this epi in this series, he still has an opinion about what's going on. So, you know, but. But before we move into everything else, there's something that we would love to say to our fans. And Miss Kelsey is going to take over and let you know. I want to tell you guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed. Um, please go ahead and share this. Um, and we just really appreciate you guys watching. For us to continue to grow, we have to use your help. So here's some things that you can do. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You can give us a ratings. We only take five stars. <laughs> um, on iTunes and you can leave us a comment um, being a part of After Buzz TV has meant the world to me mm -hmm. we like I said last week we get to talk about topics like this that right. are important and that are a part of our society yeah, so, social awareness so that has been incredible and we invite you to take part in the conversation too by commenting and like I said last week we'll shout you out if you comment so um, I want to take a moment real quick mm -hmm. yes. and shout out to um, Fantastic Family Adventures, who made a comment last week, um, and they said, I like the show a lot. It's dealing with a lot of relevant issues. I also wondered if he could see the man was black when he shot him. He obviously showed bias when he got back in the force, like his new partner pointed out. I thought Daniel should not have ever told his daughter that her birth mother didn't want her. Mm -hmm. I understand his fear. I adopted my oldest, but... With the other dad dead, she is having abandonment issues already. Thanks for the recap. I enjoyed your opinions. Mm. Thank you so much, Fantastic Family Adventures, um, for shout for commenting. And um, that's incredible that you have adopted and have can kind of relate to mm. this show as well. We really appreciate that. Continue to leave comments, and we will shout you out on next week's episode. Yes. Well, that was wonderful. We do appreciate those comments. They're always helpful. And letting us know how you all are dealing with certain issues that are being displayed on television is always great. So let's move into episode four. We need glory for a while. And there was a statement that was made by Ethan Young, who is Tia's husband. And he said, is Tia, he said that Tia is being reckless. He said that she was being reckless because of her trying to cultivate a relationship with Jira and the conflict with the police officers. So my question is Tia being reckless or bold? That I would say she is a bold person. That okay. is her character. Mm -hmm. um, I think that she's following her gut and she's following her heart um, and with issues that matter the most to her, especially when she gets up and talks, um, gives her speech. Um, and she's been advised not to bring up pl police brutality right. and talk about the force, and mm -hmm. she does that anyways. Um, I think that she was overwhelmed in that moment, and she was moved to the point where she was like, I have to talk about this because this matters so much. So I think that her character um, has always been bold and that she continues to be bold. Um, what I want I know we might talk about this mm -hmm. in a little bit, but we discussed earlier about the politics that she's mm -hmm. doing now is her being bold kind of moving over to the politics side where she said that she wasn't going to kind of go into the dirty politics right. with Gordon yes. when she um, is finding out more about mm -hmm. his son's involvement with the car. Um, yes. Yeah, some years she, ago. Yeah. Ran mm -hmm. over the pedestrian. Do you think she is being continuing to be bold when she does things like that? Or do you think she's kind of falling into poor character? Uh, <clears throat> I won't say it's poor character because Gordon invited her to do it. Okay. I will say that anytime you're bringing dirt up, I think there is a tendency to be reckless there. I don't see how you can bring dirt and feel like you're doing it in a way where you're making sure everyone around you is cognitive or cognizant, excuse me, of what's happening. I feel there's a little bit of deceit there. 
You, you want people to feel like the, your opponent can't be trusted. So you're telling them and you're feeding them things that makes you distrust that person. There is a bit of recklessness there. However, her overall view, I think she is being bold. I think it's frowned upon because she's a female. I hate to say that, but that's really how I feel. I think that female, I love alpha females. I was raised by them, uh, around them. My father was an alpha male. My mom was an alpha female. My sister's an alpha female. I love them. I think they're awesome. And I just think that, I think she's an alpha female. And I think Gordon is, uh, not, not uh, he's intimidated by it is the word. Excuse me for stuttering. I think he's intimidated by it. He doesn't know that she has this fire about her and she's coming head on. She wanted to do it clean, but he invited her to do it dirty. So she's saying, welcome to the challenge. Um, outside of that, I'd like to talk about Officer Carranza He's really stepping up his appearances in these this week's episodes, and I really want to talk about his motive. In the beginning, we see Carranza speaking to his wife, and he's saying, you know, I just want to see what he's like. I want to go out with a drink for him, try to get a feel of him, see if he has a true heart, if he has a clean heart. And it seems as if it's positive for a little while until Officer Evans makes the comment of suing Calder. How did you feel? Or what was your reaction when he said he would sue Calder? Well, he was completely belligerent in mm -hmm. that moment. So I think that he was saying things because he's hurt and that's still a topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I just want this to be done. Like, what can we do to do it? And then he just is rattling things off. It's like throwing things onto the table, throwing yep. spaghetti at the wall, see what sticks. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is his brother Ugh. and some of the friends that hang out at the bar with him yes. will take that seriously yeah. and run with it. Mm -hmm. I think that him saying that from his perspective might have been a little bit harmless um, just because he's in, he was inebriated yeah, he and was. I think he just is so frustrated and he just wants everything to go away. Like he's to the point where it's like, can this please be done? I'm tired of waking up to this every single day, every single moment. Um, and he's hurt because him and Daniel had that moment in the bathroom. They had mm -hmm. the moment at the deposition mm -hmm. and he was rattled by that. He was rattled. So I think that um, it's his brother's that the his brother that he has to watch out for. Okay. And so, so you think so you think Evan Paul Evans bro, Paul Evans's brother is and dad and dad is causing him to have a conflict, which in turn is showing is what Carranza is seeing. He's seeing that frustration, I guess. He's seen that whole family unit the family unit together is not great they're no, at a bar healthy. they drink all the time that's it <laughs> that is not a good representation mm -hmm. especially when you're going through something terrible like this you should not you know go to Sober substance mind. abuse because yes. that's going to make things worse and you're just going to do it's going to spiral mm -hmm. so officer caronzo he's seen this you know his brothers how they act mm -hmm. and that you know like when you hang out with a rough crowd and then you're going to be associated with yep. them birds so, of a feather birds of a feather that's mm -hmm. that's the thing of the the time so i i don't know what do you think his motive is going to be moving forward um, officer I think, I think Carranza's per, um, motive in the beginning was clean. I really do think he just wanted to get to know Paul Evans and see, did I make a mistake in misjudging him? I'm, I'm pretty intuitive, and I just don't think that Evans is a racist. I also grew up in the South, <laughs> and racist people, oh, in my, ex in my experience, they, are, they let you know they're racist. One way or another, they don't talk to you. They don't look you in the face. They, uh, when you walk up, they abscond. I mean, they let it, it's known that they do not like that ethnicity. So I think Carranza really does have a, a, a clean heart in trying to get to know Evans. But Evans is still, he's just having that conflict and he's not able to really respond to anything. You brought up the, 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 the um, conversation he had with Calder in the bathroom. And when Calder said, you know why you shot him, you saw his reflection through the window. And Evans is just standing there with this quizzical look on his face. He's just kind of looking. And I think he really is struggling with a, a man versus self conflict. He really is thinking to himself, am I crazy? Am I racist? Did I shoot this man because he was black? Or did I shoot him because he was leaning over the counter in a threatening manner to the clerk? I think it's very important to bring that up. So I think Carranza 
we see later on that he does send the videotape. I think that he had the videotape with positive motives. I think he really just wanted to see what was going on. But as it stands, uh, I think Carranza just wants to see justice. I think he really just wants to see justice. I do want to move on to Calder. We see Calder is back in action, speaking to Jira and denying Jira of her voice, being flippant with Tia Young at dinner. I won't say being rude, but he was being flippant. And Tia did not respond in a way that I felt someone who's in politics should respond. She is going to be put up against all types of adversity. So she needs to keep herself composed and she never needs to let anybody see her emotions on that level. Because in my opinion, that is weakness. So I want to know from you, Miss Kelsey Hightower, is Calder helping Jira or hurting Jira by having Tia come over for the dinner and trying to engage in their relationship. Is that helpful or hurtful? I think it's good. Okay. I think it's helpful. And these are going to be tough times. Mm -hmm. They might argue and um, Tia might not be politically correct mm -hmm. and she might be weak in this moment, but I think that's okay. And I think okay. they need to get through that to be able to build and have a relationship. Okay. She has a lot of weak moments around Jira because yes. she... I don't think she realized how emotional she was going to be. I don't have any kind of reference for like having an adopted I understand. You okay. know, child or mm -hmm. knowing anybody who's um, adopted and gone through this experience. Um, but she, I can imagine that she was wanting to do this. She was excited about it. She was like, this is going to be good, restorative. I want to see her again. Okay. And I think that she just had so many overwhelming emotions, mm -hmm. go like seeing her and going through this and meeting her. And I think that she was probably overwhelmed with more emotions than she could have prepared or known were going to happen. Okay. So every time she's met Jara, um, every time she's been yeah, had in this, her presence, in or, her presence yeah. she's done something kind of silly or boneheaded yes so she <laughs> brought up benny yes and that was something that why would she do that right. why is she acting that way and right. then at dinner she kind of tries to be a parent yeah and says i'm your parent or like listen up yeah. something mm -hmm. very trying to be forceful and mm. put her down and she said something like the adults are talking yeah, you know mm. and that it was just it was very unlike her character it's never healthy yes and so i think that she is going through a lot of changes emotionally like seeing her and being in that situation of course but yeah, yeah it's not her normal politically correct bold Poised. alpha female yeah. yeah i think um i have to piggyback on that i do think calder is helping I think okay. he's helping. I think that he really took the advice of Jira. And we also see earlier in, I believe it's episode three, where they're sitting at the table at their friend's house. And the the um, the African-American young lady says, does she have any family from Harrison's side? So I do see where he is becoming more sensitive to the issue of race relations. I do think he's helping because he did invite her over with all good intentions. He didn't, he did not corner Tia. He did not make her feel wrong for putting Jira up for adoption or anything like that. But he did correct uh, Jira in saying, I don't believe you have anything to apologize for. And which I agree. I'm one of these people. If you step in the lake with the alligators and they decide to, to snip at you, they are not to blame. You put yourself in those shoes. It's so true. Yeah, so... You're the one going into the water. Right, you're going into the water. You knew the alligators were there. So yeah. when Tia decided to open this relationship with Jira, she had to open herself to anything Jira wanted to know. At this point, nothing is off limits. Uh, I do think that, that Tia did overstep her boundaries. You know, grown people are talking. I'm the parent. Look here, Negro. You just got back in my life and you did it after you lied to my dad and me so hold up you know like hold up you know chill yeah. calm down player okay <laughs> it's a little soon to even be calling her mom or yeah. a parent or She's a child tia. it's tia yeah so 
Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I just want to let everybody know we really enjoyed these episodes. They were something to behold. As Kelsey said earlier, we were holding hands. We were, you know, swallowing tears. <laughs> I'm telling you, CBS has really done their thing. Ava DuVernay, we thank you so much for being a, an executive producer on this. This is just, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful series. So I do want to move on into our special segment, The Thin Red Line. For those of you who don't know, uh, in terms, the thin line is a representation of the differences between good and bad. And the line is so thin that something that is good can be perceived as bad. So the question that I posed at the beginning of the segment, I want you all to think about this, and we're going to discuss it now. Does protecting one life replace taking another? And I'm asking that in reference to Paul Evans when he jumps off of the platform to save the young lady who's about to get hit by the train, it's all of a sudden celebrated and forgotten to a point, that, except in the Sixth War, that he killed a doctor. So my question to you all is, or to you, Kelsey, does, does that alleviate the fact that he killed Dr. Harrison Brennan? And I would like to piggyback off of that and say, if you're watching now, Feel free to leave a comment on what your thoughts are. Uh, if you're in the live chat, you can go ahead and comment now, um, and we'll take a take a read at that. This is such a difficult question. It's you know you there is no I, there is no direct black or white answer right. to mm -hmm. this. Um, and I this is tough. I mean, critical thinking right it here. It is critical thinking. And I would like to also say that taking a life to replace another life could also go from the first episode when um, Officer Paul Evans mm -hmm. takes um, takes his life because he thinks that the cashier's life is about to... Correct. ...is about <clears throat> to be killed. That's that thin line. That's the thin... So that is another example of mm -hmm. the thin line. So um, in that instance he did not, he would not have replaced that. So if he wouldn't have killed um, the Dr. Harrison, right. then everybody's life would have been saved. That's true. So that was wrong. And for the one that he um, saved the woman, that was good that he did that, but it doesn't replace him killing somebody else because every person deserves to live. And yes. every person has a soul. Every person mm -hmm. is a being. Like you can't, just replace somebody you can't replace you can't replace animals like you can't replace humans True. like that you can't just it can't be a replacement policy with that well i am with you on that uh does saving one life replace killing another in the instance of the clerk if the perpetrator had been at that countertop then for me the answer is yes. And I'm saying yes, not because I believe in killing people. I'm saying yes, because as a police officer, from what we're told and what we know, you are told to protect the innocent. So if someone's life is in danger, you are supposed to warn them. But if they don't heed the warnings, then you might have to go ahead and take matters into your own hands. So I don't agree with that. However, I do think that it is relevant to bring up in a situation where someone is in danger. Here's okay. another thing. Right, go ahead. Um, you to just continue on to the replacing, you know, one life for another. Mm -hmm. He could have shot him in the leg, right? In the arm, mm -hmm. someplace besides killing him, right. and then that would have saved. Even if he was about to kill somebody else, it would have stopped him from killing someone, right? And his life still would have been saved, yes. even if he was trying to kill somebody else. That's true. I agree with that. Well, we want you all to comment in the second. You know, we'll definitely respond to you all throughout the week. And for those of you who may want to wait till next week, just let us know what you think about that question. Does protecting one life replace killing another? That is for our Thin Red Line special segment. Now we're going to move on into our news and gossip. Miss Kelsey Hightower has some really good things. All right, guys. Ramal Chan, who plays Matthew Lee um, in this episode and throughout the series, is performing 
in Chicago at Victory Garden. So if you live in Chicago, um, go ahead and buy some tickets to his play called Cambodian Rock Band. And it runs through May 12th. So you still have a few opportunities to go see him performing live at the Victory Gardens, which is a very yeah. cool thing to see when um, actors are continuing on and playing in other things. Also, Vinny Chimbler, who plays the teacher um, in this episode. Yeah, Mr. Bot. Mr. Bot. He is booked for a new uh, regular uh, series on Animal Kingdom. So that oh. that series has been going on for a while, but he is officially booked as a regular actor on that. His character will be Rual oh. on Animal Kingdom. Well, that's So awesome. if you watch that, you're going to be seeing a lot more of him. Well, great. Thank you for that, Kelsey. That's wonderful. You're very welcome. <laughs> well, now I want to move into our predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV. <laughs> we can yes. see the future. <laughs> I wish. Oh, my goodness. Well. So much to predict. As a recap, I'm telling you, we saw Evans and his family get into arguments. His daddy is controlling. We saw Jira meet Tia, have dinner with Tia, have dinner with her father. Her dad is still the helicopter parent that you pointed out. Carranza has a motive. We still need to figure out what's going on with Vicky or Vic Victoria. Vicky. Yes, yeah, Vicky. Vic. We still need to wonder what's going on with Vic. So with all of this going on, Kelsey, I'm telling you, I just don't know where to go. So I'm leaning on you to help me. Where, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, well, before I jump into what my opinions are, we saw on the promo, this mm -hmm. might help us out and give us yeah. some mm -hmm. hints, that number one, the video has gone viral. Number two, Paul's dad is pretty angry about Oof. that um, and angry towards Paul. Um, and then Daniel is kind of in a mob or something's happening. Jira is like yelling at her dad. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what's happening in that, but that was all the, the little hints that we were given mm -hmm. for next week's episode. So with that being said, I think that we are going to see more out of Tia's character okay. um, in the political stance. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see her really taking a stand towards police brutality. Okay. I think that's going to help push that storyline forward. I think that um, Professor Bot mm -hmm. um, is going to maybe be in a relationship with Daniel uh -oh. in the future. Wait I don't think that that's going to happen soon because it's very, very soon after all this has happened. But I think by maybe the end of the series, mm -hmm. we might see a little bit of a relationship forming because I can just, he's the only thing they have to lean on. Is okay. Maybe is each other. So those are my predictions. Well, now I'm with you on Bot and Calder. Okay. If, this, this is how I look at it. If you're boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whomever you're dating has an issue with someone you work with, that tells me that you're doing something that is pushing that insecurity. So I do see Bot and Calder having some type of interaction, whether it's emotional as far as leaning on Bot for advice or whether it's just uh, levity and saying, hey, let's just go for coffee. I just need to take my mind off of what's going on. Bot needs to you know, chill about his ex-boyfriend. Calder needs to chill about the case and everything that's going on with that. So I do see something there trying to blossom. I also see Jira having an issue with it because Bot is her teacher. So it's not, I guess, desired for your teacher and your parent to be trying to get together. That is never a good situation. No. And she probably thinks that it's way too soon for of that course. to happen. So yeah. I think that's going to stem another argument. Yes, I agree with that. And uh, and I do see Tia, I, I do see Tia getting her hands dirty, but I see Gordon, uh, Nathan Gordon, I see Nathan Gordon trying to stop her like, hey, hey, you don't want to mess with me. I'm a dragon. I have 30 years of experience with this. That I'm not the guy you want to have a problem with. So with all of that being said, it was wonderful covering these episodes. Kelsey, you're always awesome. Let everybody know where they can find you. Hey, guys, you can find me um, on Instagram and Twitter at, at Kels Hightower if you want to continue the conversation. And right before we go, I just want to shout out A-Run for being in the chat. Thank you so much. Come and join us next week in the chat, too. 
Yes, I am Joshua Wright. You can find me everywhere at Cleverly Clad. I am not that active on Twitter, but I will get better. So if you do tweet me, I will tweet you back and I will post updates throughout the week. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We really loved it. Stay tuned for next week. The red line, I'm telling you, is going to go down. We'll see y'all later. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.